Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jerry D'Ambrosio. Welcome to today's webinar, How to Master the Art of Candlestick Analysis. Hope you guys are doing well today. Tough day in the market today, I know. So, um, you know, again, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, just want to do a quick sound check and, and video check, make sure everybody can see my screen and uh, can hear me. If you don't mind using the chat box to let me know, Charles says good. Uh, Greg says A-OK. -okay. Joseph says all oh, good, good. John, welcome uh, everybody. Everybody looks like they, uh, they can hear me okay. Fantastic. Uh, great turnout again today, guys. You know, we I did this webinar uh, yesterday afternoon um, in the middle of the day. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you couldn't make it then, but you're here today, which again, I thank you and I commend you because, um, you know, you knew the title of this webinar obviously is about candlestick analysis. We are going to speak uh, about uh, reversal patterns and you guys are all here to learn more to better yourselves as traders uh, and I commend you for that for sure. I started researching and, and learning more about candlestick analysis and candlestick chart patterns maybe three four years ago really started to dive in deep and it's transformed the way I trade and, and the way I look at charts. Um, I love how it's you know they're very rules based and I'm sure um, that that's what you're looking for, right? A, a mechanical rules-based system to trading, not so uh, willy-nilly, so to speak, and, uh, and arbitrary in terms of when to enter and when to exit. Now let's get a few things out of the way first. Um, thank you, Kamal, I really appreciate that. Um, grab a pen, a piece of paper for sure, I think, You'll want to take some notes, uh, a drink, of course, if you want. Try to get rid of any distractions. I know it's tough. It's late in the day. You guys are probably home. And uh, if you have kids, I'm sure they're running around all over the place. But uh, just try to get rid of any distractions and also get ready to learn. That's why you're here. Uh, I always like to put my cell phone uh, on, on the other side of my office, turn it over just so I'm not distracted anytime I listen to a webinar because that's what we're all here for. We're going to be together for an hour. Um, so hopefully you guys are all ready to go. Uh, just so you know a little bit about me, that's me. Uh, that's my lovely wife, Rachel, my little buddy, Lincoln, 11 month old, uh, hard to believe is going to be a year next month. Really crazy. It's been a, a, a great year so far. Best year of my life. Honestly, if you guys are parents, you know, uh, how it changes you. Thank you, Joseph. Um, really appreciate that. Just so you know a little bit about me, many, many, many years ago, I used to teach English at the junior high and high school level uh, back in New York. It's where I grew up. So some of that kind of flows through in my teaching style. Uh, I never would have thought, looking back that many years, that I'd be where I am teaching fine folks like yourself how to make money in the stock market. I love, I love this stuff. I love what I do. Uh, I love trading in general, and I'm really fortunate to pass that information on to you guys. All I ask from you, though, just pay full attention, follow along with me, be engaged. If I ask you a question, just shoot your answer in the chat box. You, you guys have been doing a good job so far um, uh, you know, using that chat box. I also want to uh, let you guys know that uh, I do have uh, Ray Clark. Ray is in the background. He'll be answering questions along the way. Uh, if you have a question, it's going to be hard for me because I have so much content to cover to answer all of your questions as I go. I'm going to save some time at the very end to answer some of the more common questions. But if you have a question, <clears throat> excuse me, along the way, please ask. Ray will answer it for you. OK, um, let's talk about what we're going to learn here today. OK, I'm going to teach you folks an extremely reliable candlestick reversal pattern. It's actually two patterns. And I'm going to talk about the psychology behind what makes these patterns so successful. And that's what candlestick reversal patterns are all about. They identify changes in sentiment, okay, changes in investor sentiment. And we're going to speak on reversal patterns. Now, there are uh, uh, candlestick continuation patterns as well and reversal patterns. We're going to talk uh, all about reversal patterns. Uh, this is live. Uh, uh, so um, somebody asked, is this live or is this a replay? It is live and it is being recorded for everybody uh, to, to, to know. We're going to send out the recording about maybe a half hour to 45 minutes or so after we're finished here today. Now, if you stick with me to the end, 
I'm going to give you a copy of today's slides. Just somebody remind me right around 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. Again, we're going to spend an hour together. About 5.30 p.m. Eastern time, somebody remind me, say, hey, Jerry, don't forget about the slides. And I'm going to put the slides, it's, it's going to be a PDF, in the handout section of your go-to meeting control panel. Okay? All right. Well, I'm going to start things off with a question. I want you guys to answer this. What is holding you back right now? What are some of the things that you're struggling with in terms of trading? And I don't want you to say the market. So think about, you know, other than the market, because we can't control the market. Okay, uh, we ha we have control over other things: stock selection, uh, uh, position sizing, risk management, order entry, things like that. Um, okay, so Charles says getting more precise in picking entries. Okay, Voj uh, Tech says the plan. Sean says knowing when to enter. James says stops. Ron says confidence and fear of my stocks reversing on me. Okay, Arch says when to buy. Um, Market direction, oh, okay, you know, uh, like I said, I, I don't want you, I guess maybe identifying market direction, right? Um, you know, we do that better than anything that we do is is we analyze the market. We identify whether the market's rising or falling. Um, a lot of you guys are saying when to sell, when to sell, when to sell, when to enter. Well, good. You guys are in the right place. And uh, I'm here to tell you that what I'm going to teach you here today really takes care of those issues. So if if knowing when to enter a trade is is a problem. And what I mean by that is at a specific price, knowing when either the trend has continued or is continuing or has changed. And then on the other side of that, okay, if if you do enter Hopefully it's 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 in a rules based way, and there's rhyme or reason to why you entered the trade. When do I get out? Okay, when do I get out? And I, and I'm and I'm speaking about at a specific price. Okay, so we're going to cover a lot today. So one of the things that you know a lot of you I'm sure have issues with is the market conditions have changed. So uh, slide here says the same old thinking results in or, or leads to the same old results. So if market conditions change, the same trading plan and methodology that you've deployed in a, in a previous market condition will likely not work as well if, if the situation changes, okay, if the conditions change. What I want, what I don't want you guys to do, is get discouraged over losing trades. The very best traders in in the industry, the very best traders in the world today, they don't get discouraged over losing trades. Don't be like this guy, right, uh, punching a hole through your your monitor because you've had a series of losing trades. If you have a systematic approach to trading that has historically worked in the past. You have to have confidence in that system um, so that, you know, a few losing trades in a row, okay, um, won't affect you, okay? A lot of you said this. You don't know when to get in or get out, all right? So timing, not only, uh, uh, you know, of the overall market, when should I be buying stocks, period, right? Is the market rising? Is it falling? Well, if it's falling, we're not going to tell you that it, that you should be buying stocks. Okay, we do that very well, uh, kind of plastered on the homepage of the VectorVest program, whether you should be buying or not. Uh, but if it is uh, a comfortable or, or, or safe environment to buy stocks, you're not quite sure on not only stock selection, okay, is this the right setup for me? Is this, a, is this, could this be a good trade? But exactly when to get in, exactly what price to get in, and exactly at what price to get out. All of this, you take all of this together, and if you continue to struggle with some of these things, uh, not knowing if or when to get into the market, not knowing what stocks to pick, not knowing when to enter those trades, not knowing when to, uh, when to get out, it all leads to a lack of confidence. And like any industry, you can look at 
the sports industry, right? Uh, I used to play basketball. I don't know if you guys saw how, how tall I was. I'm six foot eight. I used to play basketball. And I remember uh, a very long time ago that um, a lack of confidence can lead to poor performance. And the same goes with trading and investing. If you are kicking yourself and just beating yourself up because uh, you know you're, you're you're making mistakes or not doing the right things, it's going to lead to a lack of confidence and it's just going to snowball on you. Okay. So let's talk about how to correct some of these things. The first reversal pattern that I'm going to teach you here today is called a hammer. Okay, a hammer is bullish. The next pattern is called a hanging man, which is bearish. So basically, with ev with every bullish reversal pattern. Uh, there's a sister or cousin, if you will, bearish reversal pattern. So the, the hammer is what I'm going to teach you here today, and it's bullish. So what do we know about it? We know that the the market, first off, is categorized by a prevailing downtrend. It's a bullish reversal pattern. So what do you need prior to that reversal pattern? You need the stock, the stock or the market to be falling. So that's what we're looking for first. And I'm going to show you how I determine a falling stock or a falling market, okay? Um, I'll show you that here in a minute. So let's talk about what the hammer looks like. And this is for you left brainers. In a moment, I'm gonna show you a chart uh, that basically you know, uh, illustrates what we're seeing here on the screen now. So a small body is at the uh, a small body at the upper end of the trading range is observed. Body of the candle or the candlestick is that area between the open and the closing price. Okay, and it's not important whether the body is unfilled or filled, meaning it's not important if the stock closes above the open or if the stock closes below the open. I could tell you this though, if the stock closes above the open, that means even a more likelihood that a reversal is underway, okay? The lower wick of this candlestick is at least twice as long as the body and there is almost no upper wick. It it looks like a hammer. Okay, it looks like a hammer, and I'll show you exactly what this looks like here in a second. Now, uh, what I love about all of these patterns, all candlestick reversal patterns, is they have a predetermined, baked in, confirmation level and stop loss level. The confirmation level is defined as the top of the hammer's body, okay? Prices should cross above this level for confirmation. The stop loss level is defined as the last low. It's always gonna be the low of the hammer, okay? So if confirmation is established and you take the trade, and remember, it says confirmation level is defined as the top of the hammer's body. That's a specific price. So if the stock the following day crosses above that specific price, you can take the trade. You can enter the trade. If you do enter the trade, you now know where your initial stop loss level is. It's going to be the low of that hammer. Okay. Here it is. Again, I just said that that, that slide was for you left-brainers. This fl slide here is for you right-brainers. Here is the hammer. Here is the hammer. Doesn't it look like a hammer? Right? So here's your downtrend, right? The stock is falling. And on the day of the hammer, the stock opens lower than the previous day's close and sells off sharply after the open. Okay? Let me just do something. Let me just make sure you guys can see my uh, mouse there. Sells off sharply after the open. Bears are in control. Okay. However, they're not able to sustain it for the for the for the entire day. The buyers come in. They feel like they're getting a really good price, and they start picking up shares. 
with exuberance, with enthusiasm. They push the stock price higher, and in this, in this case, they close it near the session high of the day and above the open. Let me just say this. If the candle is unfilled, like we see here, we see a filled candle here, right? If the candle is unfilled, it means the close was at the top of the body and the open was at the bottom of the body, right? The body is, is, the, is the, uh, the area between the opening and closing prices. If it's unfilled, it means the close was at the top. If it's and the open was at the bottom. If it's filled, it means the close is at the bottom and the open is at the top. Okay. It doesn't matter whether the stock closes above the open or not in order for it to to, to be a hammer. Okay. So let me again. Let me talk talk to you about the psychology one more time. The stock opens lower than the previous day's close and sells off sharply right after the open. It seems like the bears have complete control. However, they're not able to sustain that downward pressure and buyers come in and push the stock price much higher, in this case, near the high of the session, forming a hammer. The lower wick is at least at least twice the size as the, bo uh, uh, as the body. Okay, great. You see this happen at the end of a trading session and or at night, you know, you do your analysis at night, you see... Um, you see this hammer, you're saying, okay, I'm going to look to, to, to enter into this trade the next day if my confirmation level is met. So where is confirmation? Confirmation or the buy level is, remem remember, at the top of the body, the top of the body. If price the following day crosses above that confirmation level, you are to take the trade. Okay. If you do take the trade, where are you exiting? You're exiting at the low of the hammer. That's your initial stop loss. Okay, that's your initial stop loss. Okay, and I'm going to talk here in a little bit about profit taking. But if you're wrong, and there are going to be times where you are wrong, right? And the, and the stock moves lower immediately after you buy it, you have a floor. You have a floor. You have a predetermined exit point already baked in here. All right, let's take a look at an example. JP Morgan Chase. Here you have a level of support right at about 100 and let's say call it five bucks, okay? You have a, a, a touch in this area, you had a little bit of a rally, then you had a retreat and you had a retest of support. There's your hammer, guys. There's your hammer. I told you earlier that I'm going to show you how I right. So with a hammer, I, it said that the, the 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 stock or the market is is def, is defined by a predetermining uh, a prevailing downtrend. A, a downtrend is subjective. So what I do to make it easier to recognize is I use stochastics. Stochastics oscillator is at the bottom. Okay. When stochastics is below 20, that's considered oversold. And upside potential, price upside potential, outweighs further downside risk. When stochastics goes above 80, that's considered overbought. And downside potential, downside risk, outweighs upside potential. So with all candlestick reversal signals, I look for that stochastics oscillator below 20. Okay, so here we have a retest of support. Look at that lower wick, guys. Where does it stop? Right at support, right? But it rallies. So the, the stock opens lower, sells off sharply right after the open. Sellers, though, the bears can't sustain that move, and buyers come in, and here it's a filled candle, right? So what does that mean? It means it opened at the top of the body and closed at the bottom of the body. It's still a hammer, okay? It's still a hammer. It's still a, a, a potential reversal signal, okay? So you see this at night. You see it's a very oversold price situation. You see that nice rally that the bulls were able to engage in during the session, you're saying, man, this could be a good trade the following day. You know, though, 
You're not getting in during that day. You have to wait for confirmation. I can't emphasize that enough. Okay. Where is com- where's your confirmation level? The top of the body, not the high of the day, not the close of the day, the top of the body, wherever that, wherever that is. What happens the following day, guys? The stock opens lower, right? This is where the open is, right? So it's an unfilled candle, meaning the stock opened down here at the bottom of the body. Are you entering the trade right at the open? No, right? When do you enter the trade? Well, what happens? Stock rallies, it rallies, it rallies, and crosses above your confirmation level during that trading session, resulting in you taking the trade. So now you're in. Stock closes at the top of the body here, you're in. And your initial stop loss is where? It's the low of the, of the hammer. Okay? You got a nice trade on your hands. You got a nice support retracement. You have a, a, an oversold stochastics that's beginning to rise. You got a hammer that's confirmed. You're in a really nice trade. Okay? Where is my initial target? My initial target is going to be at resistance. Why? Because I know what resistance is. I know it's a level where selling pressure tends to overcome buying pressure. Okay, so I am not just going to exit when price reaches resistance. I'm going to look for a retracement, a resistance retracement to take my gain off the table. And you can see that the stock here retraced from resistance by at least a couple of percent. And I'm looking for that. I'm looking for a, a one to two percent retracement off of resistance to exit. Nice winning trade there. Okay. Here's another example, LDOS. Got a really strong level of support here. We got one touch, two, three touches, four touches, and then we have a breakdown through support in this area here. You guys see that, right? So selling pressure just overcame the buying pressure here in May of 2018 and, br and blasted through support, right? Okay, so it blasted through support. What do we have? We have a hammer. Okay, we have a hammer. We also have the next support level touched. Look at that long lower wick, right? So we have the next support level touched. The stock opened lower than the previous day's close, sold off sharply throughout the day, and that was all she wrote. The buyers came in, were able to push the stock price higher, closing it near the session high. There's your hammer. Confirmation level is the top of the hammer's body. If price cross abo crosses above that level, you have confirmation that a reversal is underway. The stock actually did, during the next trading session, go a little bit higher than that confirmation level. Okay, so you were able to take the trade the following day. Initial stop loss is the low of that hammer that you acted on. Okay, so we're in the trade. When this level of support was broken, it becomes resistance. It becomes resistance. So that's where my initial profit target is going to be. It's going to be at resistance. I know where my stop loss is, but I also have to know when am I going to take gains off the table when uh, the, the, the trend is likely over. So I am going to look to take my gain off the table if I see price retracing from resistance, not just entering into resistance, retracing from it. So what do we have on that day? The day that price entered into that resistance level, we have what's called a shooting star. That's a bearish candlestick reversal pattern. Okay. I have a bearish candlestick reversal pattern at resistance. What happens the following day? The stock retraces from that resistance level, confirming the bearish pattern, and I'm out of the trade. Here's Hyatt. 
Got a level of support here. You got one touch. You got two touches. It took a little while for the for for the next retest of that support level, but you got it here in June of 2018. There's your hammer. Stock opened lower, sold off sharply. Sellers and, and, and weren't able to sustain it. Buyers came in, pushed the stock price near the high of the session, forming your hammer. You got a, you got a potential reversal underway here. Okay. I know, guys, where I'm gonna, when I'm going to get into the trade the following day. I'm not going to get into it just at the market open. I'm going to get into the trade only if confirmation is established. Remember, confirmation is the top of the hammer's body. The stock opened the next day a little bit lower, a little bit lower than my confirmation level, but, he, but, but rose immediately after the open, crossing above my confirmation level, resulting in me taking that trade. Okay, so I'm in. Where's my stop loss? My initial stop loss is the low of the hammer. Great. I know when I'm getting in. I know when I'm getting out. Good. Another good trade here. So you got a nice support retracement. You got a really oversold stochastics. That's the key, guys. Uh, the stochastics oscillator being below 20 really means that you have more upside potential than future downside or further downside. So couple that that uh, kind of phenomenon there with a bullish reversal pattern, you got a really high probability trade here. Okay, so my confirmation level was met. Where's my stop loss? Uh, I'm sorry, where's my profit target? It's going to be at resistance. These are vector vest support and resistance lines. We already draw them on the, on the chart for you. Okay, so my, my initial... Profit target is going to be right at resistance. What happens? Not only does the stock get to resistance, but look at the stochastics oscillator is above 80. Remember what I said about when stochastics goes above 80. Downside risk outweighs upside potential. So you have stochastics above 80. You have a stock that's at resistance. You get a retracement off of that resistance level. I'm taking my profit. I'm moving on. Okay. Here's ALNY. There's our hammer. You do got a little mini support level here as well, right? You got a couple touches here. You got a breakdown through. Okay. There's your hammer. Look at where stochastics is. Below 20. Confirmation level. Top of the hammer's body. Did we get confirmation the following day? Yes. Okay. We took the trade. Now that we're in the trade... Our initial stop loss is the low of the hammer. Got a nice bracket there, right? You got a nice confirmation level and initial stop loss. Okay. Now, where did the where did the trend end? Where did this uptrend end? Can every can everybody see it, right? That's a shooting star. And that's also a shooting star. So when you were, when you're in a let me say this, when you're in a trade, okay, not an investment, a trade is a difference, right? An investment you plan on holding on to for longer, you're managing it differently than you are just a swing trade. But if you're in a trade, you got a nice gain, and you begin to see these long upper wicks. With the stochastics oscillator above 80, you got to be very, very careful. What do these long upper wicks mean? Well, the stock opens here and it, they shoot up, right? Buyers just dominate the early session, but they can't sustain it, just like the sellers couldn't sustain the down move in this area. Buyers couldn't sustain the up move here, and the sellers were able to come in and the bears were able to come in and push the stock price well off of the highs of the session. Are you in a weakening, I'm sorry, are you in a strengthening uptrend or a weakening uptrend? You're in a weakening uptrend. If you're a good trader, you're paying very close attention to this and are, are beginning to, to, to take your gain off the table. And what did everybody do, guys? 
right? What did everybody do? A ton of selling pressure following those shooting stars. Okay, here's another one. Support. One touch, two touches. You got a third retest of that support level. There's our hammer. Really long lower wick, but the body is, is in the upper portion of the range. Lower wick is at least twice the size of the body. We know where our confirmation level is. It's the top of the body. We got that in spades, guys, on the following day. Look at that big up day. So the stock actually opened lower than our confirmation level, but crossed above our confirmation level during the day, resulting in us entering the trade. Look where it closed all the way at the top there. There's our initial stop loss. Where is my profit target? Where's my initial profit target? At resistance. Okay. So see this big green, green candle here? What happens? Price explodes again and closes right at resistance. And I'm thinking, okay, I got a nice, a nice gain here. If I see price retrace from resistance on the following day like it did here, like it did here, I'm going to take my gain off the table. Did it. Did it retrace from resistance? No, it did not. It blasted through it. That's why I said earlier, you don't just sell the stock. You don't just exit the trade when price reaches resistance because it could bust through it. Okay? So, good. I'm, 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 I'm better equipped now to manage a winning trade. And that's it's tough, right? You know. You always want to make as much money as possible, but you don't want to get too greedy. But now you guys are aware that resistance and a retracement off of resistance is a good opportunity to take your gain off the table, but not just because it, it, it reaches resistance. It blasts through it. Fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I stayed in. And what does it do? So now where's my next, now where's my next profit target? at the next resistance level. So here we have a stock that bla you know explodes upward, it reaches resistance, and I'm saying, okay, if it's gonna break through it again, fantastic, I'll stay in, but if it retraces from it, I'm out, and look what it does. Retraces from resistance, and you got a really nice trade in the books there. Okay, all right, that's a hammer. That was a hammer, okay, very reliable. Uh, one bar candlestick reversal pattern. Its sister pattern is called a hanging man. Okay? A hanging man. Know this. A hanging man looks exactly like a hammer. Okay? The only difference is a hanging man is formed at the end of an uptrend because it's bearish. So here we have the markets categorized by, by a prevailing uptrend. And I pay very close attention to hanging mans when stochastics is above 80, just like I pay very close attention. And really, I, the only attention I pay is when stochastics is below 20 for a hammer. Okay? Same same description here. Small body at the upper end of the trading range is observed. It's not important whether the body is filled or unfilled. The lower wick of this candlestick is at least twice as long as the body. And there is almost no upper wick. Here's your confirmation level. The confirmation level for a hanging man is defined as the midpoint of the hanging man's lower shadow. And again, we're going to look at a chart here in a moment. Prices should cross below this level for confirmation. So, if you're in a, if if this is a stock that you own, if it's a trade that you're in, and you observe the fact that stochastics is above 80, and you see a hanging man with a with a uh, uh, the body at the upper end of the range, you got a really long lower wick that's at least twice as long as the body. Okay, and you see price cross below the midpoint of the, lo the lower shadow the following day, you are to exit that trade. If, if price crosses below that lower shadow the following day, you are to exit the trade. That constitutes as confirmation. 
if you're not in the stock and you you guys short if some of you short stocks that means that that uh, uh means that that's a position that you can take short if you do take it short the stop loss level the level at which you are to cover that position is defined as the higher of the last two highs so here's what it looks like here's your hang here's your hanging man right here looks the same as a hammer right however now you're in an uptrend you have stochastics above 80 and on the day of the hanging man the stock opens higher than the previous day's close but sells off sharply after the open sellers aren't able to sustain it and the buyers regain their composure push the stock price higher and in this case this is a filled candle meaning it closed at the bottom of the body and it opened at the top of the body it's green meaning it closed higher than the previous day's close okay so you're saying well why is that bearish why is it bearish if the stock closed you know well off of the low of the session here's why it's bearish number one you have an over over overbought price situation remember you're using stochastics to confirm that that you're in an overbought situation you're in an overbought situation and you have a situation where there was a ton of selling pressure on that day i know the sellers weren't able to sustain it but you can't ignore it right you can't ignore it if it's a trade that you're in if it's a trade that you're long you got to be you got to be ready to exit that trade if you get confirmation the following day and remember confirmation is the midpoint of the lower wick okay price crosses below that level the following day you are out of that trade if you want to take the trade short you can do that if you do take the trade short where's your stop loss it's the higher of the previous two highs it's going to either be the high of the ha hanging man or the high of the previous day whichever is higher okay let's look at, let's look at an example can you see where the hanging man is can you see where the hanging man is right you got an overbought situation stochastics above 80 you got a stock that look at that run look at that unfilled green candle after unfilled green candle guys that's not sustainable it's almost parabolic okay the following day the day of the hanging man the stock opens higher than the previous days close but sells off sharply after the open sellers aren't able to sustain it buyers regain their footing close the stock nearer you know close to the high of the session forming your hanging man okay so if you are long okay where do you look to enter okay where do you look to enter yeah, exit excuse me you look to exit the following day if price crosses below the midpoint of the lower wick what happens the following day the stock actually opens higher the following day and moves a little bit higher during that session so you're still in the trade but what happens sellers come in with enthusiasm and push the stock price lower than your confirmation level resulting in you exiting the trade okay so you didn't exit on on the open you exited when price during that session cross below the confirmation level okay if you were to take the trade short okay so what happens again the following day you don't have confirmation at the open stock rose you're not in it yet so let's say you're, you're going to take it short you're not taking it short at the open right because it's not below your confirmation level the stock actually rises during the session and then sells off sharply crossing below that confirmation level resulting in you taking the trade short if you do take the trade short where's your initial stop loss it's either the high of the hanging man or the high of the previous day's candle whichever is higher 
In this case, it's the high of the hanging man. The stock kind of moves a little sideways, right? Right. So you're saying, you know, you don't, you're saying, okay, the stock's really going nowhere. I got this big unfilled green candle. Uh oh, it's almost to my stop loss. You're thinking, okay, I'll exit the trade if it crosses above my stop loss. I'm not going to sit in the short position just because I think the stock is going to move lower. I have a predetermined exit criteria that I'm going to follow, but it never does, right? Stops just a little bit below it. So you're saying, okay, well, and then the following day down and you're, you're good to go. You're in a nice winning trade there. Okay, let's talk about this one. Home Street it really stands out, right? That hanging man really stands out. There's your uptrend, really strong uptrend, okay? Stock opens higher than the previous day's close, but sells off sharply during that session, okay? Sellers have resurfaced. They're not able to sustain it. They're not strong enough to sustain it and close the stock near the low of the session because buyers reemerge re and close the stock near the high. Again, you might consider that bullish, but you can't ignore that long lower wick, folks, especially, especially when the stochastics oscillator is above 80. Remember what we said, downside risk outweighs upside potential, and we're already seeing signs of that downside risk. There's our confirmation level, the level at which to sell our long position. Well, you know what? We don't get confirmation the next day. We don't get it the day after but we do get it on the third day. And let me tell you this, I will wait three days for confirmation. I will wait three days for confirmation, okay? So we got confirmation, I'm out of my trade or I'm taking it short. If I do take it short, there's my initial stop loss. Stock continues to move much lower after that, all right? So there, here's another one, NPTN. We got a level of resistance here, okay? at a level of resistance, can you see where the selling pressure began to emerge? Okay, can you see it? Right there, right? You got resistance, you got one touch, two touches, three touches. There's your fourth retest of that resistance level. Well, you know what guys, that was all she wrote. Buyers just didn't have enough. They didn't have anything left in the tank and the stock really retraced from that resistance level. And do you see those long lower wicks? You got, actually got three hanging mans there in a row. Okay, talk about a weakening uptrend. Okay, there's your first hanging man though. Confirmation level is defined as the midpoint of the long lower wick. Okay, midpoint of the long lower wick. Price crosses below that level, you got your confirmation. You are to exit your long position or take on a short position. If you do take on the short position, where's your initial stop loss? The high of either the hanging man or the high of the previous day, whichever is higher. Okay, so now you do take the trade short. Great, you got a nice winning trade on your hands. Where's my 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 profit target on the short position where am i going to look to cover that short position it's going to be at support right because i have a, a really nice support level here that vector vest has drawn for me okay so look at that see that that's a hammer isn't it you guys see that right there right that's a hammer is stochastics below 20 it sure is so if i'm short this trade and i see that hammer what am I going to look to do the following day? I'm going to look to exit or cover that short position. When am I going to cover it? I'm going to cover it if the price of the stock crosses above the top of the hammer's body. That constitutes confirmation. Okay. Did I get it? Did I get confirmation of that hammer? No. That's how important, guys, confirmation is and waiting for confirmation and not jumping the gun because you think a hammer is forming. Okay, so here we have a, the, the test of support. You got a nice hammer there, classic hammer, with no confirmation. That's, that's uh, known as a failed hammer. Failed hammer. I'm in the trade short. I'm staying in the trade short. That right there 
I'm pointing to it not because I, I I'm looking at it and I'm, and I'm saying, well, I sh that's when I should have covered my short position. Obviously, it is, right? But it's not just because the stock stopped going down and started going back up. It's because price formed a bullish signal, a bullish reversal pattern called a one white soldier. So if I'm short the trade, I'm going to look to cover my short position if that one white soldier is confirmed and it was confirmed on the following day. Why am I pointing out the bottom here? I'm pointing out the bottom because at that bottom, another one white soldier was formed. Now, this is a great one. This, is an, this, is a, uh, this stock is an investor's nightmare, right? And you can't buy and hold this without pulling it without pulling your hair out. You got nowhere. Okay. But there's the hanging man. There's the hanging man. So we're looking at that that pivot, right? That reversal, and we can clearly see that selling pressure is starting to enter back into this market. There's our confirmation level, midpoint of the long lower wick. Okay. Price, cr price actually opens higher the following day, but crashes immediately after the open, crosses below that confirmation level. You're out of the trade or you're taking it short. If you take it short, where's your initial stop loss? Either the high of the day that the hanging man formed or the high of the previous day. In this case, it's the high of the hanging man. Okay. I'm not pointing to that point on the chart, guys, because that's where the stock stopped going down and started going back up. And that would have been the opportunity for me to cover my short position. I'm pointing it to it because that is called a bullish harami. That's a bullish reversal pattern. You guys seeing a common theme here with the stochastics oscillator? Above 80, below 20. Let's look all the way back to the left. Stochastics below 20. Here you have a clear reversal. That's called a bullish engulfing. Very reliable bullish candlestick reversal pattern stochastics goes above 80 do you see where i'm going here you have another turning point you have another reversal that's a bearish engulfing okay stochastics goes below 20 we have another one white soldier another reversal let's look over here stochastics goes above 80 we have another bearish engulfing, and we have a bearish Harami here right at resistance, and that was all she wrote of that trend. I can't give you a specific percentage, but what I can say is if you're looking at a chart and do this going forward, if you're looking at a chart and you identify these turning points, you can clearly see them when you look at a graph. More times than not, again, I'm not going to give you a specific percentage. I don't, I don't I think that there is one necessarily, but more times than not, you will see a bullish or bearish candlestick reversal pattern at these turning points. Okay? So you guys have asked a ton of questions, and I really appreciate that. I want to really appreciate Ray answering for you. Obviously, guys, I can't answer them all because there's so much that I wanted to cover there. But I really appreciate you guys asking questions. Now, by that, by the fact that you've answered so many questions, I believe you're asking yourself this question. How can I take my trading to the next level? I want to learn more about this stuff. You should, Jerry, you showed me Hammer and Hanging Man's. Um, but... There are dozens more. So you have a choice. You can kind of take bits and pieces of what I showed you here today, do it the slow way, or you could do it the fast way. The fast way is this. I'm offering a six-session webcast series beginning on May 30th, okay? And I'm going to teach you 12 bullish and bearish candlestick reversal patterns, the most reliable candlestick reversal patterns around, okay? And in this six session webcast series, you're gonna learn how to profit from, among others, piercing and cloud patterns and the proven technical indicators that complement them. I'm gonna focus guys on market conditions, first and foremost, that offer the best odds of success. 
I'm going to show you how to utilize our Unisearch tool to quickly find these patterns. And this is what I love about these reversal patterns, okay? They have already built into them, and you saw with the hammer and hanging man patterns, precise to the penny entry and exits for each pattern and a ton more. Okay, so here are the six modules, okay? They are pre-recorded modules. They will be released, the first one, which I will teach you all about dojis, um, dragonfly and gravestone dojis specifically. The first module will be released on May 30th. Module two, which will be released on June 6th, is going to be more about hammer and hanging man patterns. And those are one bar patterns, obviously, right? Modules three through six, I'm going to teach you guys about two bar patterns. Engulfing patterns, both bullish and bearish, bullish and bearish haramis, piercing patterns and cloud patterns. Piercing is a bullish pattern, cloud pattern is a bearish pattern. White soldiers, which is bullish, and black crows, which is bearish. And here are the dates, guys, of the pre recorded modules. Now, the modules are pre recorded. Okay, however, I am going to offer six live mastery sessions, mastery support sessions. In these sessions, they're designed to help you implement what you've learned in the module. We're going to take a look at what you're doing. I'm going to answer questions. And I'm also going to be giving you a homework assignment at the end of every module. And we're going to go over that homework assignment here in the mastery sessions. I'm going to guide you guys through this entire process. Also as a bonus, okay, it's essentially a module seven. It's going to be a live trading session, okay? I'm going to implement what we've learned over the course of the six weeks. We're going to start at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, an hour before the market opens. You're wondering why an hour before the market opens. Well, there's a lot of homework that needs to be done each day, and you can do it at night, but we're going to do it in the morning. There's market analysis. There's trade setup. There's identifying for each pattern where your confirmation levels are, where your stop loss levels are. There's order entry, and then there's trade management. We're going to do all of that in this live trading session. Okay. If you don't already have our VectorVest real-time program, you're going to get it free for 30 days, uh, 60 days, excuse me. Okay, so if you're not a VectorVest subscriber, we're going to give you our, uh, 60 days of VectorVest real time, which includes pro trader searches. Pro trader searches allow you to add stochastics to the to the hammer scan or to the hanging man scan or the engulfing scan. If you are if you are a VectorVest subscriber and you have end of day or intraday, we're going to give you 60 days access to the real time program. Okay, included in the course. All right. So the early bird rate guys is still available. Okay. It's $795 for seven weeks that expires on May 28th at 5 PM. The regular price is 995. The elite price, which if you are an elite subscriber, you have to call for is 497.50. Now I don't want you, I want you to forget about that 795 price. Okay. Because if you order, before the end of today's webcast, and I'm going to stick around for a little while longer to answer some questions here, and I promise, guys, in, in about a minute or two, I'm going to put the slides in the handout section. If you order before the end of today's webinar, I'm going to knock an extra 100 bucks off, and, and, and you, can, you can sign up for the course for $695. This price is only good for the next roughly half hour. Okay? Uh, let's see if Ray did it. Fantastic. Thank you, Ray. In your chat box, guys, Ray typed in that address that you see at the bottom there, www.vectorvest.com slash MACA, M-A-C-A, not make America candlesticks again. It's, make, it's master the art of candlestick analysis. Go to that website. You can actually click on it in the chat box or copy and paste it in the, in the chat box. When you do go to that website, this is what you're going to this is where you're going to land. You click on the register button. 
This 695 rate, guys, is not available for everybody. It's only available for you for being on this webinar today. And it will only be available for the next half hour or so. Fill out the registration form, submit it. Now, if you are an elite subscriber, okay, give us a call. You just click on this button here, the contact us button to find our, our phone number. Give us a call for special pricing, which again is $497.50. which is half off the regular rate. All right, what I just did was I inserted th these slides. It's gonna be, it's a PDF. It's in the handout section of your go-to meeting control panel. You guys should see it there, okay? My email address, and I'm gonna, I'll type it in the chat box, jerryd at vectorvest.com, okay? jerryd at vectorvest.com. I'm, I'm your instructor for the seven weeks. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Okay, I'll be your point, uh, your point guy if you have any questions. Okay. Jerry D at vectorvest.com. I type that in, in the in the chat box. So once you sign up for the course, if you have any questions throughout the seven weeks, you can shoot me an email. Okay. Now in the slides that you now have. I added the calendars here. So the, the, the modules are pre-recorded. The first one, module one, will be released on May 30th, next Thursday. Okay? Next Thursday. Module two will be released on June 6th. Module three, the 13th. Module four, the 20th. Module five, the 27th. And module six on Wednesday the 3rd, because the 4th, obviously, is Independence Day. Let me tell you something, guys couple things. Number one, you have access to all six modules, to all six mastery support sessions, um, uh, the, the, uh, the bonus module, the live trading session, all the slides and all the resources for one full year. Okay. So if you can't make the live session or maybe you can't watch the pre-recorded couple of pre-recorded sessions because you're on vacation, you have them for a full year. Okay? Everything is housed in digital chalk. Okay? Once you sign up, you will get an email with all the instructions that you need moving forward. The instructions on how to access digital chalk, the instructions on how to access the course. Here are the live mastery sessions. There'll be the Tuesdays following the release of each module. So mastery session number one, June 4th at uh, noon Eastern time. Again, they're live. The 11th, the 18th, the 25th, the 2nd, and the 9th, all on Tuesdays, okay, at noon Eastern time. And the live bonus session will be Tuesday, July 16th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. By the way, this is fully guaranteed. This course is fully guaranteed. You have a 100% money back guarantee. What does that mean? That means if at the end of the course, you've, you've watched all the modules, you've watched and, and attended all the live sessions, you've done all the homework assignments, you've come to the trading session, and you say at the end of seven weeks, this is garbage, <laughs> this can't help me, we'll give you your money back. But you got to do the work. Okay, you got to do the work. Um, so keep that in mind, folks. Okay, Suzanne, the, the, the PDF is in the handout section of your go-to meeting control panel. Okay, you should see it says handouts, one of five. And it says, if you open that up, uh, it'll say candlesticks webinar, it's a PDF. Okay. All right. Uh, Mark says, I'm, uh, I'm unable for this course, but I'm interested in pursuing it at a later date. We'll be given it again at a later date, and if so, approximately will it, when. We don't know when, Mark, likely this year, uh, this calendar year. So just stay tuned. Uh, keep an eye on our website, vectorvest.com, but uh, it will be most likely at, at some point this calendar year. Okay. Joseph says, I hope so. Okay. Uh, Joseph also uh, is, is actually taking our bottom fishing course. Um, okay, yeah, so, so keep, keep that uh, in mind, Joseph, as well. All right, this is what I want you guys to do. If you've already signed up within the last five, ten minutes, type in I'm in in the chat box. 
I want to kind of get a get familiar with your names here, guys, because I'll be working with you very, very closely. So just type in I'm in in the chat box if, if you've signed up or uh, will sign up here within the next half hour. Because remember, I want you to get that six ninety five dollars uh, special rate. Okay. And I'm going to, again, stick around and answer some more questions. Oh, good. Uh, uh, Ramsey says, I have signed up as an elite member. Fantastic, Ramsey. Looking forward to working with you. Good question, Douglas. Douglas says, on a hammer, if, if uh, price drops below the wick, lower wick, and the initial stop loss, do you exit or wait for the close? I wait for the close. I wait for the stock to close below my, my, my exit, my uh, stop loss. And then the following day, I sell on, on weakness. Why? Because I've seen too many times during a given trading session that the stock will go below that initial stop loss and then rally uh, up through it and then continue to move higher for the, for the, for the, for the, uh, for the ensuing days. So I wait for my initial stop loss. I, I wait for price to close below my initial stop loss. And then I sell the following day at the open on weakness. Okay. All right. Uh, Dana says, I am an elite member and calling now. Fantastic, Dana. Uh, Ken says, I'm in. Whoop, whoop. All right, Ken. Welcome aboard. <laughs> William says, just joining. Time was 430 Dallas time. Did I miss something? No, it was 430 Eastern time, William. Um, 430 Eastern time. Okay. Um, Kumar says, thanks. Loving the seminar. Uh, the handouts, Kumar, are, are in the chat box, uh, in the handout section, excuse me. The, the, the slides are in the handout section. Okay, Ruben, fantastic. John says, sell on weakness. Does that mean when price goes below the stop loss again? Well, price closed below the stop loss, right? So what is it closed at the bottom of the, of the candle's body that day and below the stop loss. Weakness means if the stock opens lower than the close of that day, I'm out, which of which is going to be below your stop loss. But if it opens higher, so for example, if the stock closes lower than the stop loss and then opens lower than the close of that of the previous day, I'm out. But if it opens higher than the previous day and the stock rallies, I'll stay in the trade. Okay, good. Uh, Fahad says, how to sign up? Uh, go to, the, I'm sorry, let me go back here. Go to that site that you see at the bottom there, vectorvest.com slash M-A-C-A, M-A-C-A. Go to that site, click on register, and fill out the form. Okay, Curtis, the number to call if you are an elite subscriber is 888-658-7638. And I've typed that in the chat box, 888-658-7638. And again, I typed that in the chat box. If you are an elite subscriber um, who, uh, who, who is someone who has been with us, Vectorvest, for more than five years or has spent... Uh, at least $5,000 over the course of uh, a lifetime. Okay, so that's an elite subscriber. If you, if you know you're elite, give that number a call and then sign up. If you don't know if you're elite or not, call us anyway, okay? All right, give us a call anyway. You're welcome, Curtis. All right, guys, any more questions here before I close up shop? Remember, that 695 rate, guys, is still available. It'll be available for another about half hour or so. Sure. Sean wants, to, wants me to take a look at J.P. Morgan again. And today today's today's candle, and he wants to know if it's a hammer. You guys tell me, is it a hammer or not? Is it a hammer or not? Kamel says no. Why not? Mura says no. Glenn says yes. Ad says no. Why is it not 
technically a hammer. Because the lower wick is not twice, at least twice the size as the body. Good job, guys. Good, good, Douglas. Good, Mira. Good. Because it's close. It's not, it's not a textbook hammer. Not a textbook hammer. Okay. Uh, yes, Scott, it does work for ETFs as well. Uh, this methodology, this, these, this candlestick reversal patterns work on ETFs as well. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I enjoyed today. I hope you guys d uh, did too. Um, again, my email address is jerryd at vectorvest.com. You, you will get this recording within about a half hour, 45 minutes from now. However, the 695 rate, guys, is only available for the next half hour or so. Okay, so be sure uh, to, to save yourself some money and, and sign up for the 695 rate. You're welcome, Sean. Absolutely. Looking forward to working with you guys. Again, my email address is jerryd at vectorvest.com. Once you register during the course of the of the course itself, shoot me an email if you have any questions, and I'll be uh, I'll, I'll be happy to work with you. Take care, everybody. Have a great evening.